Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, what we're trying to find is the current in each of the branches. That means that first we need to find the equivalent resistance, find the total current, and then use our techniques to find the current in each individual branch. So again, we start with the, the part of the circuit the farthest away from the battery, which means all the way to the right. Find a couple of branch points. There's one here, there's one there. Notice we have two paths from one branch point to the other, so there's a parallel circuit in between. But on the right side, there's two resistors, which means we should reduce those first to a single resistor. So let's go ahead and do that. So we redraw the circuit. So this circuit will now look as follows. We still have our single 10 ohm resistor in that branch. We have a 10 ohm resistor here. We have a 10 ohm resistor there. And these two resistors together will turn into a single 20 ohm resistor. So that's 10 ohms for this one, 10 ohms for this one, 10 ohms for this one. And here we have a 20 ohm resistor. So what we did was, and there's my red pen, we took these two resistors and turned them into this one single resistor. Everything else has stayed the same. So now the next step would be to take these two resistors here because they are between this branch point and this branch point so we have the same branch point but now we have one single resistor in each of the two branches so we're going to use the product over the sum method to find the equivalent resistance here so our equivalent for the final two branches right there so what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two into a single resistor right so when we do that we get a circuit that looks as follows. We still have our 20 volt battery right here. So we have a 20 volt battery, a single 10 ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, and these two combined will form a single new resistor, equivalent resistance. We'll have to figure out what that's equal to. Like so. So this is 20 volts. This is 10 ohms. This is 10 ohms. And we have to figure out what this is equal to by, again, using the product of the sum rule. So let's see here. Uh, our equivalent is going to be 10 times 20 divided by 10 plus 20, which is equal to 200 divided by 30, which is equal to 6.67 ohms. So that's a single 6.67 ohm resistor, 6.67 ohms. And this is a 10 ohm resistor. All right. At this point, again, we repeat the process. We pick this branch point right here. We pick this branch point right here. And we want to take those two resistors and turn them into a single equivalent resistor. Again, they're in parallel. So again, we have to use the product over the sum rule. So let's move over here. That means we're going to have a 20 volt battery, a single 10 ohm resistor, and then those two will combine into a single equivalent resistor. Like so. so we have a 20 volt battery, a 10 ohm resistor, and then those two combined. Again, we're going to find the equivalent resistance. So our equivalent is equal to the product, which in this case, it's going to be the product of those two. So it's 10 times 6.67 divided by 10 plus 6.67. Hey, let me use a calculator to calculate that one. So 2 divided by 3 times 10 plus 10. So actually, we multiply times 10 and we divide by 16.6666 equals. So we have exactly, wow, that, that's kind of nice. It reduces to a 4 ohm resistor. So now this becomes a 4 ohm resistor, and we have a 10 ohm resistor in series. So those two combine into a single resistor, 10 plus 4, which is 14 ohms, and we have a 20 volt battery, which means if we're now going to find the equivalent current, we can say that I is equal to V over R equivalent, which in this case will be 20 volts divided by 14 ohms. One point four three to two 
decimal places. So that's the total or equivalent current of that circuit. Now what we need to do is find I1, I2, I3, and I4. So what we would do is go here and realize that this current here is I. The current coming down here through the 10 ohm resistor is I1. And the current going in that direction is I2. So at this point, we can go ahead and find I1 and I2 based upon the value of I and based upon this equivalent circuit. So we can say that I1 is equal to I times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch, that would be 6.67, divided by the sum of the two resistors, which is 10 plus 6.67. And so we know that I, let's go ahead and replace I by what I is equal to, which is 1.43 amps, like that. And what do we get? So times 6.66666 divided by 16.6666 equals, and that gives us 0 0.57 amps to two decimal places. So I1 is 0 0.57 amps. Now to find I2, we can do that the same way as we did here, or we can simply subtract I1 from I to get I2. So another way to get I2 would be to say that I2 is equal to I minus I1, and I was equal to 1.43 amps. Subtract from that 0 0.57 amps. That would leave us with 0 0.86 amps for I2. So you see, is that, was that spontaneous? Yep, that's correct. So this is equal to I1, and this is equal to I2. All right. Now, continuing, we still need to find I3 and I4. Now, notice I3 and I4 together should add up to I2. So, to find I3, we take I2 and multiply it times the ratio of the resistance of the other branch, which is, well, in this case, that would be a sum, that would be 20 ohms, divided by the sum of this branch plus this branch. So 10 plus 20, that would be 30 ohms. 10 plus 20. So in this case, I2 is equal to 0 0.86 amps multiplied times 2 thirds. So we get 0.86 times 2 divided by 3, which gives us 0.57 amps. So 0 0.57 amps will be flowing through the branch that has current I3. There we go. And finally, we can say I4 is going to be equal to I2 minus I3. And I2 was equal to 0 0.86 amps minus I3, which is equal to 0 0.57 amps, which is equal to that would be 29 amps, or zero, I should say 0 0.29 amps, and that's equal to I4. A quick check, is this plus this equal to that? That's 70, and sure enough, that is it. That is correct. So we have I1 equal to 0.57, I2.86, I3.57, and I4.29. And that's how we find the currents in each branch. We first find the equivalent resistance. From the equivalent resistance, we find the total or equivalent current. And then we start dividing it. We can see that I is divided between I1 and I2. We can look that over here. So we find I1 and I2. And then once we find I2, we can then use that to find I3 and I4, since I2 splits up into I3 and I4. And that's how we find the currents in each of the branches of a circuit like that.